Okay, Mike, the stage is yours. Hello, uh, do you want to knock these off for the light or is that okay? Okay, okay, okay. Well, just one second. Yes, if we can easily see. Now it's too dark. Oh. <laughs> Hi, thanks for thanks for staying so late to watch this. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get the videos to download. Very sorry. So we'll just have to talk about it instead. Um, I'm Mike Groves, um, ex-professional winch driver from the Long Mind. Some of you guys might know the Long Mind. We do about. 12,000 launches a year, or did when I was there 35 years ago. Um, so I've got a lot of experience. Um, we've made about 170 winches now in our company. Uh, we're actually on 173 now, I think, building uh, for a club in Germany. Uh, we supply about 45 countries. We've only got winches in about 25 countries, but we get around. <coughs> so uh, that's the subjects we're going to go through. And then questions at the end. I'll try and go quite quickly because I think it's getting late. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we try to bring winch manufacturer quite far forward into the 21st century, but of course now it's changing again with electric. Uh, these are some. These we made for the British Air Cadets. There's actually 25 of them we made in one batch, which for us making five or six winches a year uh, was a lot because we had to make 25 in one year. <laughs> so we did it, but it was a busy year. <coughs> so that's the first one we made on the Long Min Hill for my home club. And, and that's the current one. So the, but the basic principle is the same. That's only a single drum winch because they use a retrieving winch. So there's no drum there, it's on the other side. <coughs> Where most clubs <coughs> Excuse me, like um, use a two drum winch, but not all. No. And then we can make single drum winches, or um, we're just developing a new four drum winch. We have done a six drum winch, but the market mainly, most people will compensate to a four drum winch, and it's more practical, towable, movable, um, and simpler design. So, electric winch. So, Electric, which we've just finished, uh, the latest one, uh, yeah, operating voltage, charges up to 800 volts. We need such high volts to keep the amps down because the amps on a launch, even at these volts, you can see, is, is massive. Uh, and the peak power, because launching a glider, you're normally using, well, we use a lot of big block Chevys, 8.2 litre, full power, and it will slow that engine down on a launch. Or people are using big diesel engines, a lot of power, a lot of torque. <coughs> power consumption, so you can see if you need to store a lot of power um, to do a cordless winch, which we'll show in a minute, then you need to store a lot of energy on the winch. Um, oh, one thing I will say is, if you don't, I've got to go home tomorrow morning, so the winch to deliver on Friday, a new winch. So if there's any questions um, after this, then uh, I'll be around. So ask me tonight, or we can email and chat. But I won't be around tomorrow. Sorry, uh, I'd love to be, but I can't. So that's the first winch we made, 2010. That's at a club in the south of France, and it's it had the batteries in it were um, Odyssey dry cell batteries, and they just about. But uh, it's done uh, nearly 12 years and they're, they're about died now. It's working, but it's not good. So that's the life we've got out of those batteries. Um, just, a, just a question, Was, were there lithium ion batteries or what kind uh, of... No, they're, uh, they're um, Odyssey, just like a square, high, very expensive, very good, high quality lead acid battery, okay. but they use virgin lead, not recycled lead, okay. so they perform very well. Yeah. But they were quite small, they got high cranking amps, yeah. but low capacity, okay. and it was to fit them in the winch. And that was a standalone, that was a, that was a cordless winch with no... Uh, no, no, this, the, these batteries were in here, 54 batteries yeah. to get volts, yeah. all 12 volts each, yeah. <coughs> and then here it is plugged in, okay. running. Okay. Yes. Got it. So that's at, at um, 
Chalet in the south of France. Um, it's about 3,000 feet up, I think. Uh, this was going to be the video. Sorry. Um, there is some on our YouTube channel if you if you want to have a look on a link off our website into YouTube. They are on there. <coughs> but I guess it saves time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a minute of launch. But that's a Lasham that's about 1,300 metres of cable run. And yeah, they're getting really good launches. Um, but I can't show it. Uh, no, I'm going to move on. I'm just trying to open it. Sorry. It's trying to open the e. It's trying to open the video and it can't. I know it. Oh, and then maybe e. press escape. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. It's good that you choose the Swedish colors for this. Yes. <laughs> All the Ukraine. And Ukraine. <laughs> Supporting Ukraine. Ah, oh, there we go. I'll go back. Thank you. No worries. Need someone cleverer than me. Um, so, sorry, I made a couple of notes and things of what I'm trying to. So, uh, that winch that uh, was a video, there'll be more pictures in a minute. So, this just shows the basic construction. It's a conventional winch in principle, but big stack of batteries, as, as you'd understand, um, expect. Uh, though all these ones are in slight trays, because otherwise the access is difficult. Um, that's just the start of the construction of it. See, these are all the sliding, <coughs> excuse me, sliding trays for the batteries. And there's the motor and uh, the start of the construction. Um, that's it at Lasham. So, standard configuration, say it's a standard winch <coughs> with electronic power instead of a combustion engine. Um, yeah, but this has only got temporary wheels on. We've actually, the club that it's going to is um, in uh, about one hour east of Hamburg, and they've got an old ESW German winch, but they've had a lot of problems with it. They've had quite a few accidents and for various reasons, and they condemned the winch and said they weren't going to use it. We loan them a normal combustion winch uh, on propane to keep them going because they banned the use of it. And this will be going uh, next week on its way to Germany. So these wheels are ready for road transport because it's a very wet area. We've got big wide tires going on it and big mud guards um, just to help them in the, in the winter or the, the spring and the autumn. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the controls, uh, as with all our standard sky launches, right hand brake, everything's pull to stop, push to go. Left hand is drive, which on the conventional winches is, is drive and neutral in the transmission, automatic transmission. But it does the same thing, it's just done electronically. And then this would be your throttle for your engine, is now your power and torque for the winch. So all our winches have these preset guides. So a to F, F, K8, E, Junior, D for discus, C, K13, B, Pukas, A, K21, A plus, Duo, Arcus, something big. So it's actually just a preset stop, which is spring loaded. So, it, but it gives you very accurate control of the glider um, and controls the, the torque, of course, and the speed. Then the whole sector goes up and down for headwind because it doesn't matter what glider it is the difference for the wind is the same for all the gliders five knots is five knots for all gliders um, and then this on the electric winch is a display that gives you the volts and the charging and the, and the status that and it has a, a go no go green light when it's got enough charge because this is a plug-in model that's, that's charging um, all the time. <coughs> that was a video of it launching, but basically he accelerates to the stop and holds it there. Um, we will have an additional um, feature where you can put some a little bit more power in for the climb, and we've got our traffic light uh, system on the side as a, a visual display to optimize the torque, the pull. 
<coughs> like some people do, having a, a pressure gauge on their diesel winch or hydraulic winch, we do the same with our combustion engine winch. We have a pressure gauge which gives you launch tension. But this, because it's electronic, we just do with a light. Keep it simple. Ah, it's going to do the same again. Uh, what did you do? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's a video again. <coughs> and there's one more as well. Yeah, I think I just. What did you do? Escape and this. Oh, and then go again. Escape. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I did the same. And then just. Yeah. Ah, just escape and just use the arrows. Um, so this is the motor, or the, the back of the motor, it's just a, a large industrial motor, but a high RPM motor, because more RPM, less torque. So this motor will go, we control it to about 4,000 RPM, um, and probably about 3,000 under load. Um, the reason we use an industrial motor is <coughs> because of the duty cycle. People say, oh, my Tesla is really fast. Yes, your Tesla is really fast for four seconds, to accelerate, so it would accelerate the glider, but then in the climb, you've got to hold that power, and the load gets very high, as you've seen from my amps and, volt, uh, and watts, is you've got to hold that power for 30 seconds. We've got some airfields using 2,500 meters of cable, so if that was an electric winch, you'd be holding on power for a minute and a half. So your Tesla engine is a very small motor, very good, but massively overloaded, which is fine for short duration. But if you if you do if you launch launch all day on a busy site with a little motor, it will just go back. Um, and I, I think the Teslas, if you have ludicrous mode, you only get 50 goes, and then it locks out. Otherwise, you'll destroy the car. Um, so I've been told. Um, this is the. Um, <coughs> This is the battery pack uh, that we're using on this for this customer because they want they didn't want lithium. They explicitly said they only want a plug-in winch, but they have got the power lines from their old ESW winch from their from their German winch. So this has got AGM batteries. Now, if you don't know about AGM batteries, they're absorb glass mat, I think, and it's basically more of a, a dry cell battery. So there's no liquid to evaporate, but um, the duty cycle with a conventional battery, which is number of starts in a car, which is similar <laughs> to launching a glider, it's actually worse launching a glider, but in comparison, uh, a conventional battery gives you um, 30,000 crank starts for a normal battery. An AGM battery has now developed, and they're very popular because stop-start cars use AGM batteries. So they're rated for 360,000 starts. But it only costs 25% approximately more for the batteries. So for maybe an extra 1,000 euros or even 2,000 euros, rather than putting 30,000 start batteries in, we put 360,000 start batteries in. It's, it's not worth a little bit of money that's a very small price for the winch, extra. We put in these batteries, so you get lots of life. Uh, but these, if you had a lithium winch, these would come out and lithium put in. Uh, and we have a range of the lithium you have to, as I uh, can't remember his name, the, the professor explained, having them in series to get the volts. So we can have one bank to get volts and that would give you say 40 launches and then you can double the banks have two banks double the launches there's different sizes as well there's actually about five different choices so you can go from 40 launches to 150 launches depending on your club how many you need to do some clubs would like to do two days and then charge their winch off of solar panels on the hangar roof during the week because many clubs, especially in Germany, which is the main market, um, they're, they're the clubs getting the funding up to 80%. They don't fly in the week, so they've got all week to charge the winch up and then have two days use with a big battery. <coughs> Other clubs who want to charge overnight, maybe the small club would only need a small battery, charge up overnight for the next day. So 
we have to as we try and make a standard winch but every customer has always wants something a little different <coughs> that's just an example of lithium batteries but yeah it's, it's not the ones in because um, the one we're making now is not um, but then you can be cordless you don't need the power lines in the ground um, solar panels as we've said for um, on the hangar roof which is the the biggest area or on the field but that's normally somewhere you want to be landing in a glider um, this is just to explain which i think most people know now but when i started this presentation a few years ago people didn't understand but it's actually worse than this because lithium you can use all battery uh, as i'm sure you know now with lead acid agm um, and gel batteries you're looking at using only this much but the reality of launching the glider is because you're pulling so many amps out of the battery the voltage drop is so much that it will start damaging the battery so instead of using this much you're probably only going to use about this much of the battery because you've got to allow the next launch not to pull the volts below i think it's 10.5 or 11 is ideal but if you go below <coughs> 11 down to 10.5 you start to damage the battery it will work you can flatten your car battery charge it up and it works but long term if you do that often you will reduce the life of your battery so the battery charge unit is actually buried under here <laughs> but i couldn't get a photo of it and it's a we use a ev charger electric vehicle charger they're now available you can buy them <coughs> at a reasonable price so we use a standard electric vehicle charger when we made the first one we had to make the charger ourselves which worked but it wasn't very efficient whereas now they're very efficient because they're mass produced and people have spent millions of euros developing it which we haven't got the money <laughs> so we're buying in where we can <clears throat> now the most expensive part of the winch is the inverter drive that that actually costs us about 20 the whole package costs us about twenty eight thousand pounds it's a crazy amount of money but it's the only way we can run the industrial motor and all the systems reliably we haven't got enough knowledge to be able to do all this ourselves so we have a industrial drive expert who does it for us very good not cheap but it does mean that it's designed to be in a factory all day getting a lot of abuse and working very reliably so it's very good but it's not cheap the other difference is with with our machine is because it's industrial parts if there is a problem then you could get an industrial electrician out to look at it um, whereas uh, I think the German company they make it all themselves which is very clever and of course they can make it much cheaper but only they can work on it and they, they and they won't understandably they don't give away their designs or their drawings um, so the, the final drive we manufacture we always have which is the heart of our machines um, so you have the, the drum selector here with couplings left and right and neutral and then disc brakes all easily accessible and there's an automatic which is not shown the oh might be on the next slide sorry yeah there's an automatic mechanical caliper here operating from gas springs it's connected to the drum select lever for left and right drum so the brakes are always on if you for towing the cables out so you never have an unbraked drum and it's fully automatic by the drum select lever the very early winches were made we had a manual lever for towing the cables out but of course occasionally someone forgets and then um, you have lots of loose cables so this way it's much more reliable and simpler for especially <coughs> for the operator so with the, the 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 back of the machine if you like the final drive is the same as a normal machine um, a normal combustion machine sorry the only thing is we just use a different gear ratio because the motor rpm is a little bit lower than a, than a combustion engine um, yeah as I've said it's otherwise that could have any power plant in it to the same winch uh, 
Uh, we can also, people say, well, we've got a winch, or we want to buy a, a standard winch, uh, a combustion winch, <coughs> at the moment. <coughs> Most of ours run on propane, so it's, it's still emitting CO2, which is not good, but it's the cleanest compromise if you cannot afford or get the funding to go electric. But the, what we say to people is then, if maybe in a few years' time you do get the funding, things change um, we can just take out the engine and build the electronics in it would have to come back to Skyler which is not a kit but um, but it, you don't sacrifice the winch the, the winch part is exactly the same sorry that was another nice video of it launching um, but they're on YouTube uh, uh, that was at Lasham Oh, now I've got to do the thing again. Just press escape. Escape. Yeah. And, and then just use the arrows. And then use the arrows. Ah, yeah. magic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, <coughs> just, so, so here's some pros and cons. Uh, most of them, I think you've probably worked out yourself now. So mechanically, very simple. Electronically complicated, yes. Uh, generally, less servicing required because you haven't got oils and filters. But, of course, it's... Uh, more specialist knowledge, you've got very high volts, it's all protected, but if you need to get in deep into the winch, you've got to be very careful or qualified. Uh, battery life replacement costs must be considered, as with all battery powered uh, equipment, as part of, if you're looking at whole life cost. Um, normally supposed to be funding, uh, seem to be environment friendly, more routes may be available, yes. No funding available, electric winches are more expensive than a propane or petrol winch. If lithium cord winch, yeah, so if it's a lithium winch, it could be, depending how much lithium you want, it could easily be twice the price of a conventional winch. So if you don't get funding, then as we're making two winches now, which are just normal LPG winches because they haven't got any funding, so they're not going to spend twice the amount on the winch. But then maybe one day we could upgrade them to electric. So, so yeah, question. Um, what about the increase of uh, the prices in gasoline and petrol recently? Well, do, do that kind of more level the playing field for lithium? Yeah. Right now and, and, or have the batteries gone up too? <laughs> well, they have, um, but with a, with a propane winch, you're not paying highway tax. You're buying it as if you're heating your chickens at a farm. Okay. So it, even though it's gone up, it's still quite low. If you're buying gasoline, yes, of course, it's a lot. But that's why you're trying... We try and encourage, if, if they're using a combustion winch, yeah. which most of our customers are, of course, is to go down the propane route because it's cleaner, it's cheaper fuel. Mm. The servicing, the service interval mm. is, is half that of uh, a petrol winch because it's so clean. Okay. Uh, we normally change the oil and filter at 6,000 launches on a, on a, a propane winch. Mm. On a petrol winch, it's 3,000 launches, mm. which at some clubs, like at Lasham, they're doing... 12, 15,000 launches a year. Yeah. That makes a big difference. Yeah. So then, and of course the fuel for them, they wouldn't be on petrol. Oh, oh. <laughs> they save that for the Pawnee and the Robins. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, they like that, all that. So um, yes, it is making, but at the moment, the, the main, as always, it's the money. <laughs> if, if people don't get the funding, they're going to have to be a very wealthy club or have a contributor or some wealthy members who are helping the club to go electric, most of them, if they haven't got the funding, will just buy the cheapest winch they can, um, which is, you know, that's, that's business, if you like. So, right, sorry, one question. One question. Uh, yeah. what, what is the cost, uh, the, the fuel cost with uh, propane versus, uh, you said one, one kilowatt hour, roughly? Yes, approximately, if you have, depending on your length of airfield, yeah. it makes a big difference. Yeah. But say, I think it probably with a thousand meter run and a mixture of gliders, you could allow for maybe one to 1.2 kilowatt hours per launch. Mm -hmm. um, whereas with an um, equivalent L or propane winch would be <coughs> about 0.8 of a liter. So I don't know what you're paying, but it's, it's not what you see at the petrol station, it's what you can buy it for commercially in a, in a bulk tank. Okay. And so I think the actual fuel running costs, because even now with the prices, um, a kilowatt hour of electric will be cheaper than approximately a litre of um, 
of uh, propane. Mm -hmm. And of course, definitely than a litre of petrol, yes. Mm -hmm. So the fuel cost or energy cost, if you like, will, will be lower. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it from your solar panels on the roof, yeah. then of course, it's win-win. But you've got to pay for that infrastructure. And somewhere that's doing five, 10,000 launches a year, that, that will come back quite quickly. But someone who's doing 1,000 <coughs> launches a year, it's going to take a long time to get your money back. Mm -hmm. As much as I'd love everyone to have electric winches, you've still got to look at the reality, haven't you? Um, so, it, yeah, in Germany, some clubs are getting 80% grants. And so if they're putting solar panels on the roof, they're buying electric winch, they're doing a whole energy storage, they could be spending half a million euros. But if they get 80% funded, it's a bargain. Uh, is, it, is it the same for solar panels in Germany? Do you, do you in, in Germany, they get the funding, as far as I know, up to 80%. Depends, because it's all regional, regional funding. Yeah, yeah. They get it for the package. So it's not for the winch, it's for the winch and the panels and the whole package to go greener. Up to 80%. Up to 80%, you see. Like That's in the nice. Netherlands, we're, just, we're going next week to a club in the Netherlands. Uh, well, several that are coming to visit. And they think they can get up to 40% because yeah, different governments. So that's a good help, but if you've got to do the whole package to be totally green, then it, it's going to be, yeah, for a normal little club, it's too big a, as we say, too big a pill to swallow. Do you understand that expression? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so if powered from the grid, on-site fuel storage is no longer required, so you don't need a bulk tank. I mean, if you have a petrol winch, well, you've probably got that for the tug anyway, unless you're having an electric tug. Um, solar panels can reduce demand from the, yeah, we spoke about solar panels, yeah. Um, if grid is unavailable, generator may be quiet. Now, interestingly, it sounds crazy, but there's a lot of people I talk to who go, oh, we want an electric winch, because that they, they're happy, they've got the, and oh, we'll just run it off a generator. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> 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 but, oh, look, look, we're happy with that. Um, fine. <laughs> it seems that's a lot of systems rather than just put the engine in the winch. Yeah. But if it keeps them happy, um, we actually we're using a generator now to do demonstrations and testing, but that's only temporary. And it's a silence generator, and so it does work okay, but of course it defeats the object of the exercise. But it, it, interestingly, it's averaging about um, half a litre of launch. So it's running all the time. So you're running a hybrid system in, in fact. Yes, <laughs> yes, hybrid, yes. Because <laughs> I, I always, my, um, I would like to, but of course it wouldn't sell. I would like to have a hybrid winch. So you have a, a Chevy V8 in the middle, surrounded by batteries, and say, ah, the engine has to cut in for the launch. <laughs> just to help the batteries. And oh, <laughs> much cheaper, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, unless uh, we've done that one. Public, of course, yeah, PR, public relations, will be very good, especially like a, a site like here where you've got public coming and a beauty spot. Um, but additionally, if you have to put in electric infrastructure or you've got solar panels and the club we're going to on sun, uh, a week on Sunday in Germany, they're looking to put in solar panels, but then have a, a lithium bank to charge the lithium and then put that in the lithium on the winch. So then, of course, the upkeep of that infrastructure will, in time, cost money because nothing lasts forever. Um, quiet operation, engine war. Now, that is quite important to certain sites more and more sites as more houses especially in the uk and we've heard a lot in germany netherlands very densely populated if it's quieter that's much more attractive um, and as a winch driver myself it's quite nice that you haven't got to warm the engine and cool the engine off it just works uh, just makes it a bit nicer um, the other thing we do find on the quieter operation we we have uh, we're just making winch now a combustion winch that we put lots of silence <coughs> on to make it quieter. But again, if the public see you've got an electric winch, then ticks the boxes. Um, the airfield is remote, then yeah, three, if you plug in three phase, three phase power 
may be difficult, expensive to install. My club, we haven't got three phase because we're on top of a hill, only single phase, so it wouldn't be worth, it would cost a lot of money to bring it from the valley up. But then lithium, if you use what, solar. What, what fuse do you, what uh, power? Power, sorry? Of the tree phase. Oh, sorry, oh, yes. Yeah. It's um, normally 32 amp. Okay. Three yeah. phase. So you're getting back to that 20, 22 kilowatts yeah. of energy. <coughs> so then you can do the maths. If you, you're probably not going to get more than 10 launches an hour with only 20, 20, maybe 11, <coughs> 12 launches with 22 kilowatts coming in. If you're using, oh no, sorry, sorry, maths is wrong. I was working on two kilowatt hours, which is a previous um, design. But the, We've now got the data and it's about one. So, in theory, you could do 20 launches an hour if you're with using one amp. with a 32 amp supply. So, that would keep up with most clubs. Mm -hmm. I mean, most clubs with a two drum winch, a lash will do 20 launches an hour with a two drum winch, but they're just round and round really fast. Most clubs do 12 to 16 an hour with a two drum winch. Um, so yes, it's 32 amps is enough, but that's still, to run that each end of the airfield mm. is still, if, because the price of copper now for the copper wire is so expensive. So it's where the lithium then maybe works out better. Uh, which bursts and infrastructure is in place, then the cost of actual launch, as we said, um, should be lower because the energy is cheaper than, than um, uh, gasoline or, or propane uh, but battery life must be considered so if you say yeah each launch is much cheaper but then eventually even with lithium batteries they're going to need replacing at some point I mean the lithium will be very long life like car lithium battery is very good and the AGM battery is very long life so most clubs aren't too bothered about it because the committee making the decision um, to push their club forward by the time the battery need replacing, they'll be gone. <laughs> Not their problem. <laughs> um, if power from the grid, uh, which position is limited uh, by the access to the power supply unless it's lithium cordless. So it's in Germany and a lot of clubs, they just have this way or this way for the wind and that's it. But some sites, you can move the winch in lots of different places, which means then you'd have to have lots of power points. So again, the, a lithium cordless, as we say, which does have its advantages for that. You can move it wherever you want. But a lot of clubs, just the winch goes there or the winch goes there. So we'd only need two points. One's normally close to the clubhouse, quite sure. So then you have one long cable to pay for and, and uh, trench in. Um, right, nearly there. Uh, further simplifies winch drying techniques to help, yeah, we've explained that it's simple to launch. Um, battery required for electro winch much heavy. Yeah, so there is a bit of a weight issue, but most clubs, that's not a big deal. Often those clubs have got massive lorry winches anyway, so. And we put, the tyres we're putting on this winch go into a soft airfield about <coughs> this wide. <laughs> How much weight uh, do the batteries put into the air? Uh, well, the one we're doing now, yeah. you probably don't want to know, it's about five tons. Is, well, is that with AGM? AGM with AGM. Okay. With lithium, of course, yeah. if you only have 40 launches, yeah. it would probably be only three and a half, four tons, because yeah. they're much lighter. Yeah. If you had a lot of 150 launches of lithium, yeah. it would probably be four, four and a half tons. Yeah. So we can just take it apart to deliver it and then put it back together. The problem I've got is because of the, this one that you've seen the photos, I've got to do some demonstrations on the way. I don't want to be building the winch every time. So I'm actually going to tow it with my 4x4, okay. uh, which isn't very legal. So if I get caught in Germany, I could be in Colbitz yeah. building a glider to escape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I can make a winch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just want to briefly explain about electric tree bridge. <clears throat> now, this is not for everyone. But the main requirement for electric retrieve winch or, or, or any retrieve winch is if you need a very fast launch rate, some clubs do, uh, or and or both maybe, your airfield is very wet because in the UK we fly all year you see, 
and you make a lot of mess, a lot of damage on your airfield with your grass. And if you're in a nature park, then that's not good. So the retrieve which has up till now been combustion, we have one half built in the workshop <laughs> because we're so busy on customers waiting, we're building the winches to order. Our project, if you like, is having to wait till autumn. So it's the one we're building uh, is actually going to be cordless. So you could, if you've got an electric main winch, you can use the power socket if you've got power in the ground. If not, you can use cordless. But because it uses much less energy, and we need to keep the cost down in retrieve winch, because committees go, well, I can get a Lepo uh, retrieve car for free. <laughs> Someone's old scrap car. So why are we paying to tow the cables back? But it does have its place for certain sites. So we're using conventional batteries, and it should give about, if you're on Dyneema cable, because pulling the cable with Dyneema, of course, uses much less energy, it will, it will do about 40 retrieves. But if you need any more, then you could go lithium, but you just pay more money, as we've, as we've said with the launch winch. So this is actually one in the Brazilian Air Force. This guy, there was about three guys in the Brazilian Air Force, and I was training them to drive the retrieve winch. And they'd never seen it before in their life, and they just drove it perfectly. And I'm like, these guys are really good. You, I can drive one. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah, you know. The, yeah, we've got one but, in my club. But, like, these guys are just perfect. I yeah. told them what to do. And, like, and then we went for lunch, and there was a big picture of a jet plane on the wall, jet fighter, taken from another jet fighter. And I said, oh, that's a nice photo, massive photo. And this guy said, oh, I took that. And they're all fast jet pilots, <laughs> so pushing two levers, <laughs> no problem. Anyway, uh, power consumption for high speed is much lower than using vehicle retrieve. So standard lithium batteries can uh, standard batteries can be used, or lithium if many retrieves. Yeah, we we said that. Yeah. Um, so using electric retrieve which means that the launch system is all electric, uh, zero emissions airfield, and. Launch winch require less energy when uh, using a retrieve winch um, because what normally happens is you launch the glider, if you like, or just and then you wind the cable in. Now, winding that cable in actually uses, uh, this was done at Terlet when Terlet was using a main and a retrieve winch on propane. They did the exact mass because they had a, uh, a filling station with, with, a, with a dial, with a display, and the amount of fuel that we used to wind the cable in, if they did twin drum launching, was the same amount of fuel as it, towed, it takes to tow the cable back. Because if you wind the parachute all the way in, all the way in that's quite a long burn to bring it in. So at the top of the launch with a retrieve winch, you just, you, you catch the slack cable like normal, a little bit of throttle, but then you stop, disengage the drive, and then the retrieve winch, as soon as the glider releases, you engage the drive and pull it back, as you know. Mm -hmm. And so the, the whole cycle goes back, and because that's a much smaller engine or motor on the retrieve winch, you actually get the retrieve vehicle fuel or energy is gone. Yeah. Because you're not winding all the way in to wind it all the way back. And that can save up to 30% of energy, depending on your airfield and conditions and cables you're using. Plus, you're always running the retrieve vehicles on the airfield, all the old cars. You're running yeah. them always with cold engines, yes. which is mm. bad yeah. for everything. You know. and, and normally, I mean, in the UK, a lot of the lepos, as, yeah. we as the Germans call them, they're all Land Rover discoveries or something mm. that someone's cheap. And they're like 1990s, dirty diesels, worn out diesel engines, <coughs> puffing lots of horrible emissions. So. This does make the whole process a lot cleaner and saves you, if you're looking at energy use, this will save you energy. But say it's not for everyone, but it does have its place. Um, so saves you, yeah, reduces wear damage and fair launch rate. So on a busy, really busy day, on open days at my club, we do 30 gliders an hour. But you're really working hard. 20 gliders an hour is, is quite comfortable. <coughs> Um, because you're not having to bring them back. Well, as you know, it, it's fast, isn't it? You have any picture how it's how you have placed? No, but I can send you some. And sorry, because th this was mainly going to be this was about launch winches. 
So I've only just breezing on this because we're doing an electric tree wrench. I've not got all the, the technical detail. Of, but I can send something to you. There's, 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 you can draw it if you want. Oh, I can draw it if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can, um, Sorry. I'll just see. Oh, oh, other winches. There you go. <laughs> so, so that's what we call main winch, yeah? If you excuse my drawing. And then this is the retrieve winch. So about 30 metres to the side, um, we put the glider, which, uh, well, I'll show it sideways. Um, so, yeah. so you've got the glider like that. And so as the glider takes off and the winch, and the cable, the glider is here. So if we say the cable's going like this, and then the retrieve cable will be going like this down. So here is the glider. So as soon as the glider comes off, this winch goes full speed, pulls the cable straight back again. So as the cable lands, it probably lands about half or three quarters away down the field. <coughs> And so you don't get the cable wear, but of course you don't uh, on the ground. You reduce your cable wear, you reduce the ground wear, and you're not running a vehicle. So um, I'm not sure, sure how else to explain it. Yeah, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah. So it is one cycle. As soon as this, the, the driver here, he's normally the guy recording the launches. So we don't need an extra person. He's the guy dispatching the gliders. He can sit on the winch. Um, unless you have spare people. So as soon as he sees it released, we have a little parachute on the end and a 30 meter rope instead of, we normally run 20 meters to the glider, we run 30. So there's always a big separation. So when he takes off, there's no chance of the retrieve cable getting under, uh, over the wing on the glider. So it's a safe separation. So little parachute, so the parachute opens, uh, it's only as a visual indicator. You don't actually need a parachute because the cable floats in the air. Mm -hmm. um, and he pulls it straight back and say, this guy just collects his slack like normal and then stops, releases the brake and it flows back again. As a, as a main winch driver, it's actually really simple because it's one cycle and it's done. And then when the cable comes close to the retrieve winch, uh, he, he has a speed selector, he just slows it down, slows it down. Like coming up to the roundabout with your car, slow it down, slow it down, and bring it to a halt. So it's, it's very simple. I'm actually going to make, on the electric one, we can have a little counter with a display, so that if someone's not experienced, they can just watch the counter as it comes in. Because it does happen occasionally, someone brings it in too fast, and it, and, it, and it goes into the rollers. Now it has, a little, it has a little knot as a weak link, so it just breaks and you feed it back through and connect it. It's not a problem, but it just gives you a couple of minutes delay, and it's just embarrassing for the, for the driver. So our little display will make it much simpler to operate. Um, is, that, is that enough? So I, enough yeah. yeah, there is some videos, I think, on our YouTube thing, a channel, no, no. to have a look. But if you're not, if you don't know about the tree wrench, it's quite difficult to, to explain. Um, so other winches in theory could be modified to electric, but if it's not a standard winch, then it's going to be a lot more work. Because something like a Van Gelder winch, because they're on the diesel engine, the gear ratios would be a lot different. So need, the amount of re-engineering can be done, and we could supply as a kit for a club to do, but. Uh, just be warned, it will be a lot of work. But some clubs in Germany, we sell kit winches because they want the winter project to keep the, the young ones, give them some work to do and engineering. So it can work, just depends, it's case by case on, your, on what winch you have, if you wanted to convert something yourself or us, with our help. Um, thanks for listening. Questions? Sorry, Any questions, questions for Mike? <laughs> Time for bed. <laughs> What is, the, what is the cost of a uh, tube drum 
Yeah. Electric wind. Yeah. Electric winds. Yeah. Um, the one we're just making for Club in Germany is going to be this is a plug-in one with the AGM batteries. That will be about 135,000 euros. Uh, a lithium one's probably going to start at 150 for the smallest lithium and go up. You're paying because the lithium packs were were buying. It works out. And with all the, the BMS, the battery management, and, and all this packaging, you're looking at about uh, 500 euros per kilowatt hour. Mm. So it, it, it really adds up. Because yeah. um, they're, they're big packs, because they've yeah. got to take the heat, because the, the, the discharge one, rate is massive. 135 to 135. Approximately, <laughs> yes. That, yeah. that was so on that, a, that is 80 um, batteries. Yeah, so that's a is plug it, Is it single drum, so? Uh, two drums. Two yeah. drums. It, it can be single, but it's most cost effective to have two. Yeah. Um, so a, a, in comparison, I've just got two inches we're making now, one's going out on Friday, which are normal, um, I'll say normal, they're normal for now until electric takes over. They are uh, propane ones and they are about eighty-five thousand pounds. What's that? Ninety-five thousand euros. Ninety-five hundred thousand euros with everything, with dynema and delivery and that. So it's a it's a bit more expensive. Um, it's thirty-five thousand euros more expensive, but then it only goes up with lithium. So again, people are only doing it with funding. I don't know any club have just bought one. They they get all the but money. It's about forty percent. More expensive, yeah. Than AGM, and yeah, then probably another 30 percent to, yeah, yeah. And, and with a good amount of AGM, uh, with a good amount of lithium, it could be twice the price, but yeah, with, with a lot of lithium. Um, but it, again, it's case by case, so specifications. Um, and you could have it without the trailer, you could have it with an open cab if you want to put on a lorry or you know on a truck so there's, there's lots of variables that the winches are made as a module that you can put them on a lorry <coughs> or with a trailer and tow them depending what the club wants how many do you produce per year well i started the first one was finished in 91 1991 and we're now just finishing number 173 uh, so i don't know what the mass is on that it's not that many Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been doing it a lot of years and we keep going and we're getting busy and busy. Is it increasing? Slowly, yes. Um, but we get, what we're getting increasing is all the people that want parts from us because we make a lot of uh, spare parts for toast winches because toast winches does not exist anymore. Because toast shackles, the, the, the parts for the gliders, that's totally different. They were family, but many 40 or 50 years ago, they had a big argument and they separated. Because at Aero, if you ever saw when Toast Winch used to go to Aero show, he was at the one corner of the, and the other uh, Toss Shackles and Hearts were at the other corner because they fight. <laughs> they had to keep them separate. <laughs> so, but the Winch's side's gone, so we support those with parts and spares and re-engineering. And so we were getting quite a lot of and um, parachutes and cables and connections and shackles, and, which is good because it gives a little bit of income between the Winches. With a small company, the cash flow goes <laughs> with each winch, but that's business in a small business, yeah, which I'm sure you guys know all about that. So, any other questions? Okay. Sorry, we're running in the As a memory, oh, thank you. It's a Swedish, right? About the um, Google Translate. Yeah, <laughs> to our uh, gliding is. Mostly in Sweden, but that yeah. I can I just remember that uh, on the chapter of um, launching methods. Right. There is a picture. Oh, look. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I will. When I have a look at this, uh, when I've finished, I will um, send it up to the Longmind to my yeah, yeah. club because yeah. they'll love to see yeah, this. Yeah. 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 Of course. Because the guy who trained me to be a professional winch driver is known as Pete the Winch, Pete Salisbury. And if anyone's been to the Min, they'll probably know Pete. And he's launched, we think, when he retired, he's still launching up the long min, and he's 86. <laughs> but when he retired at 65, he'd launched enough gliders to go to the moon and about halfway back. So we think by now he'll get to the moon and back. So he needs to, 
if he can live long enough, he needs to contact NASA. Because <laughs> he goes, I can do it with a winch. <laughs> okay, it has been a very long day. I hope you have, um, it has been good for you. And uh, we summarize the day tomorrow morning. Not, not this evening. Good night.